Amen. For those of you who are here live and those of you who are screaming in, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come thanking you for this day. Thanking you, O oh Lord, for your grace and your mercy that kept us all last night and awakened us to this new day. God, we want to thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. It was nobody but your Nothing but your goodness and your mercy that we're here today. Not because we've done everything so right, but because you've been so good. And we thank you. Now, Father, we come today to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor. And Father, I pray that you would begin to just prepare our hearts. Help us, O oh Lord, to search ourselves. And if there's anything that would hinder this service today in us, we come now asking, O oh Lord, that you would forgive us. Lord, and we lay it at your feet right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we come serve and notice today that no devil, no warlock, no witch will be able to take control of our service today. Father, we plead your blood from the back to the front in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you now to cover us for we know and we realize that we don't fight against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities and Lord we're crying and we're agreeing. We said, Lord, we need you this day. We need you to cover us. We need you, Lord, to, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. We pray for the praise team, oh God, for the musicians. We pray for the word that's going to come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we come against any hindrances 
that the enemy would try to pull this morning. Father, we are on full alert and we thank you. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. We give you praise. We give you glory. And I decree and declare that we will not be afraid to worship today. We come to give you praise. Cause our eyes to be focused like a flint. And focus on you. No distractions. We come against distractions. Even for a second. Cause our eyes to be focused on you. Help us to forget about ourselves and concentrate on you. God, we thank you. We praise you and we thank you for this opportunity. For this is your day. And we will praise you this day. God, we love you. Help us to act like we love you. Thank you, God. Thank you for this day. We will never have this moment again. So since we're here, God, I thank you that we're going to give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and let the saints of God say amen. worshipers in the house this morning ready to give God glory on today amen how many of you came with a praise on your lips hallelujah with a worship in your heart on this morning our pastor has been preaching and teaching on Wednesdays about worship and about how it is a heart posture so how many of you came with a heart posture ready to worship God on this morning amen hallelujah we came for no other reason but to lift up the name of Jesus on this morning and if you came for the same reason I invite you to stand up on your feet and get ready to worship him with us on this morning because he is worthy to be praised amen hallelujah this song says Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary how many of you know that it's a personal thing that we need to all personally be prepared to be a sanctuary Hallelujah. So can we prepare our hearts and our minds together on this morning to be a personal sanctuary, pure and holy. Hallelujah. So we can worship him in spirit and in truth together on this morning. Come on and put your hands together with us on this morning. Hallelujah. So that we can get prepared to go higher in this place on today. Because our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. 
devil, you a lie. Yes, happy yes. birthday, happy anniversary yes. to each and every one of you. We love you and we bless. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. God bless you. Have you ever felt like you're just missing something, like you're forgetting something? I don't know what, but charge it to the head, not to the heart. Cause I, can you hear me? Okay. Have you ever felt like you f you're forgetting something? Okay. Charge it, charge it to the charge it to the head, not to the heart. Okay. I'm 50. I just turned 50, so God bless. Oh Jesus, thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you. Now, if you would please to govern yourselves accordingly to the announcements. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, October 27th, and these are your weekly announcements. Abundant Love Fellowship Church will be the special guest at Victory and Praise Life Center on Saturday, November 2nd at 2 p.m. for their pastor's appreciation service. Pastor Ross would like to meet with all members of the prayer team this Wednesday, October 30th at 6 p.m. in classroom number one. Lit, Living in Truth, Young Adult Ministry is held every second Saturday of each month from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. in classroom number three. Please see Sister Ayanna Minor for details. Abundant Love Fellowships One Accord Marriage Ministry is held every third Saturday at 11 a.m. in classroom number three. Pearl's Women Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in the youth room. Man Up Men's Ministry is held every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. in classroom number two. New members orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and everyone is invited to attend. Please contact Minister Yolanda Miner for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. For additional information, please contact Minister Evelyn Jordan. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live. So join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible Study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candice Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can also visit our website at www.alfwaco.com for an update on future events. You can sell your tithes and offerings via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button, or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas, 76643, or via Cash App to ALF Offering, or via QR code. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Hey, Amen. How many of you are excited and ready to hear the best choir from this side of heaven are y'all ready <laughs> okay. okay let me go to my offering if you need your envelopes we're going to go into offering time if you need an envelope please raise your hand for the usher
us pray. If you take your hand, your offering in your right hand as we pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this seed that is placed in our right hand, Lord God. Father, we just pray and ask you, Lord God, to bless it, to, to uh, multiply it, Father God. Father God, I pray for those that were that are, are not able to sow but have a heart a desire to sow a seed on today lord god father i pray that the seed that is being sown on today let it be to edify your kingdom lord god and that we use it in the way that you choose for us to use it for your kingdom in jesus mighty name we pray amen <laughs>
Take my heart, Lord, on. Give me a holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. Mm, I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Just hear from you. 
I will know what to do. I won't go alone because I'm never on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. May it speak to our hearts, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Before we move um, forward in our service, I, I would like to take a moment so that we can appreciate and love on our pastor on today. Today, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. If I can get abundant love, every member, partner, every family and friend that is here on today, if y'all can please stand because I need your help with doing this. Pastor Ross, we the Abundant Love Fellowship Church, family and friends, we want to say thank you. Thank you for answering the call God's call thank you for preaching the word of God thank you for loving the Bible thank you for being obedient thank you for being a man of integrity thank you for your humbleness thank you for carefully planting seeds of truth in our hearts thank you for those long nights that we may not even see thank you for caring and loving us Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for reminding us on February the 16th of 2020 to don't be discouraged. Thank you for praying for us and reminding us on September the 1st, 2024 to always go for, the, go for his heart. Thank you for crying with us. Thank you for the marriages that you've helped save. Thank you for the battles that you fought. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you made and continue to make. Thank you for your consistency in your walk with Christ. Thank you for doing your best. Today we honor you. Today we bless you. Today we notice you. And today we say thank you. 1 Timothy 5 and 17 says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. I'll say that again. It says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double in honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Your dedication and your service to our church, to our community, does not go unnoticed. And we profoundly, and we are so grateful, and we say thank you, Pastor Ross. We love you from the bottom of our heart. We love you, and we God, may God continue to bless you abundantly in every area of your life. Thank you. We appreciate you so much. God bless you. If you did not get the opportunity to sow a seed or whatever gift that you want to give to Pastor Ross in appreciation. This is not just the day. This is a whole month we should be appreciating him. We have a table over to my right after services. Please, please feel free to bring. Please do not leave without giving and loving on Pastor because he's done so much for us. And then also in the back, we have some refreshments and we want you to stay. We want y'all to stay and just fellowship with us and enjoy and just love on them and things. Again, thank y'all so much. So I have the pleasure of being able to introduce um, the minister that will be bringing the word on this morning. And I was going back and forth from going back and forth last night and I was writing and I was like, well, what do, you, what do I say about her? What do I say? <laughs> And I'm just going to put it like this. When she's appointed by God, she has a very nurturing spirit. 
She's obedient to his word. She's inspired by the Holy Spirit. She's noble in character. She's trustworthy in faith. She's empowered to serve. And she's devoted to God's purpose. And with that one word said, I'm going to say she's anointed. Church family and friends, I want to introduce to you Minister Dequisha Betters. Please stand on your feet as she comes. Good morning. Whew, what a pleasure it is to be here today. First off, I want to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. Y'all, he my everything. And then to my pastor. Y'all, I'm going to My pastor and my first lady. Thank y'all. Pastor, thank you for your constant teaching and preparing us and be an example of what ministry in action looks like. We thank you. To my family, to my friends, <laughs> I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> thank y'all. <laughs> All right, if you're able to stand, please let's stand for the reading of God's word. And I'll be coming from John 15, five through seven. And I'll be reading from the English standard, standard Version. If you got to say amen, if you need more time, say hold up. All right, and it reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, that's why I need to be connected to him. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and he withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, first and foremost, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for trusting me, God, to stand behind this sacred desk. I ask you decrease Quisha and increase you. Let nothing be said, God, nothing be done that isn't pleasing to your sight. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in this place not ever before. And I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So in my field of work, we are able to work from home. And one of the key factors of working at home is having a strong internet connection. So my job has started putting most of us on a new headset and software, and in order for it to work, we have to have a strong connection. So within these last few months, the new headset and software that I was given began to go in and out. And when I would reach out to my supervisor, she would say, check your connection. I would then go to my network settings and on my computer to make sure I was connected to the correct source. Once I would disconnect from my network, look at your neighbor and say, where do you need to disconnect from? And when I would reconnect, I found that I was able to gain the necessary access to be able to perform my job duties effectively. So just like I had to check my connection to be able to work, we as believers have to check our connection with God by spending time with him, submitting to him, and allowing his word to live in us. So if I had to choose a topic for today, I would choose check your connection. So today, we're going to focus on three points. Identifying the disconnect, removing the distraction, and establishing the connection. 
have your way. So we see here in the text that Jesus was commanding and reminding his disciples of the importance of remaining in him. You know, sometimes we allow our relationships with, as Pastor Ross would say, Willie and Shaniqua, to take place of our relationship with God. Which will lead me to my first point, identifying the disconnect. One way that we can identify the disconnect is by identifying what or who are we allowing to occupy our time. What is keeping you from spending time with God? How many of us can say amen to the fact that we may have let our relationships or duties take place of our relationship or time with God? We used to study the word on a consistent basis. We couldn't let our day in without spending time with him. We become so busy with our day-to-day -day things because that's what we're used to doing that we forget to attend to the relationship that matters the most, which is the one with God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay, I've been there too. When I looked up the word disconnect, I saw it to mean to have a connection broken. So maybe their job has become so overwhelming that it has led to a disconnect. We feel as if we don't have time to study because once we clock out, we are ready to knock out. Maybe you've been calling on your friends and your family more than you call on God. Sometimes we seem to be more caked up or booed up than we are prayed of. Hmm. Or perhaps you had an experience to where you lost faith in the connection. I can say amen myself to sometimes coming to church every week tired because I've been disconnected. We'll cry out, God, I need more of you but won't make time for more of them. We tend to only open up our Bibles on Sundays when the pastor is preaching or on Wednesdays when the pastor is teaching. Nudge your neighbor say, he takes more than that. It says here in the text that I am the vine, you are the branches. The vine is to symbolize that he is our source and we are nothing without him. We can't leave without them. We can't serve without them. We can't move without them. Just like it says in Acts 17 and 28. For in him do we live, move, and have our being. We oftentimes return to different things like alcohol or whatever you may use as a coping mechanism to be our source to only find out that it was temporary. We return to different people that are in our lives expecting them to be God but we'll get upset when they show us they are nothing like God. It says here in the text, the one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. It's so important to me that I remain in him because I've seen what life is like when I try to do it on my own. Have you ever wondered, God, why isn't this bearing any fruit? What I'm doing, everything that you asked me to do, and I'm still not seeing no fruit from it. So what do you do when you don't see the fruit? We can be honest and say that sometimes we get frustrated. And we'll push whatever we're called to, to the side, and we'll say, I'll get to it next time. It gets frustrating when you feel like you're doing everything, and you still don't see the fruit. Or you feel like it's taking too long to see. When I was studying the text, I didn't see where Jesus gave the disciples a time frame on when they would see the fruit being produced. But I can imagine that because he gave the promise that he would take care of them in the meantime. <laughs> While you were waiting on the, the doctor's report, God kept your mind and was healing your body in the meantime. We as believers tend to forfeit the promise because of the process or because of how long we're in the process. If God were to tell you he was going to bless you with a new car, we'll get happy and go and tell everybody about the promise, but get upset with going through the process. We would tell God, you didn't tell me that I would have to go through my car breaking down several times or having to go from dealership to dealership to only keep hearing the word no. You may have asked for healing in your body or in the body of a loved one, and God promised you the healing, but didn't say when the healing would take place. So we get irritated with the process. 
we'll tell God, you said in Isaiah 53 and 5, that by your stripes we are healed. But it seems like he's taking forever to do as he promised. Look at your neighbor and say, trust the promise. When I look back over my own life, I become grateful that God has stayed true to who he was, even when I was going through my meantime. He didn't leave me where I was stranded. He didn't leave me where I was, but he kept me and he kept my mind. When I wanted to give up, he gave me reason to keep holding on. I didn't understand what God was doing at times, and at times I was confused on what the process, the purpose was of the process. But I'm grateful for his protection in my meantime. So I just want to stop by to encourage you to remain in him in spite of and to not allow the distractions or of the process to hinder your connection with him. In verse 6, it says, if anyone does not remain in me, look at your neighbor and ask, what distractions are you dealing with? He is thrown aside like a branch and he withers, which will lead me to my next point, removing the distractions. I've got to a point in my life where I'm okay with getting rid of whatever and whoever is serving as a hindrance. If it takes me back to the old me or requires me to act out of character, it got to go. I become so desperate to be connected to God that I'm quick to get rid of a move around from who I know isn't pleasing to him. So you may say, Queen, how can I remove these distractions? You've helped me to identify, but I need help with removing these distractions. Because if we can be honest, it's some distraction we've been dealing with for years. Hmm. <laughs> My God. But because we're so used to being distracted, we think it should become our norm. Meanwhile, God is waiting to remove the distraction so that he can have a better relationship with us. Sometimes we blame other people and other things for the reason we are distracted. But we fail to look at ourselves. We too can be our own distraction. It ain't always the enemy. It ain't always somebody else. But sometimes it really is us. Sometimes it's the way I handle things. Sometimes it's the way I respond to things. Sometimes it is me. <laughs> Talk to yourself and say, it's me, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> but we are quick to point the finger at somebody else. We have to examine our lives and make the decision on what we need to remove. Friends and family, I love you, but I can't allow what I used to. <laughs> I've got to fix my connection with God. I can't sit around hoping and wishing. I've got to make a move. I've been in this place of confusion and frustration too long. I've got to get reconnected to my God. Whew, hallelujah. It may cost me some friends. Hmm. It may cost my comfort. And that's okay because I need God. It's tough, but it's necessary. This next season of my life, I have to do it with God. I remember when I was in school and when my siblings and I would bring home a grade that wasn't good enough, my mama would say, give me that phone until you're able to focus. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> and once she removed what she knew kept me distracted, my focus began to change. Whew, yes, God. I was able to study better. I was able to be more attentive. I was able to have a better understanding. We have to get rid of whatever is distracting us or blocking our focus. We've got to stop feeding our flesh but starving our spirit. We oftentimes get so much time and energy to the wrong things that we miss what God is doing in the now. We come ready to see who was on the highest hill, the tightest suit, or we come hoping the praise team with a choir is going to sing our jam instead of focusing on the move of God. We're so concerned about what he said and what she said that we miss what God said. <laughs> it's time now for just coming to church, but it's time for us to start being the church. We'll say, God isn't speaking to me. Or God isn't listening to me. 
But the real question is, are you listening to him? What has God been instructing you to do, but you've been too distracted to fulfill? Hmm. Let me ask that again. What has God been instructing you to do, but you've been too distracted to fulfill? We tend to always say, it's time out for church as usual. But I have to take it a step further and say, it's time out for doing life as usual. I know change is uncomfortable and can be scary, but it's necessary. We can't do life God's way and our way at the same time. So which one will you choose? I've learned that doing it my way got me nowhere fast. So I had to surrender to doing it his way. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Not declare what Quisha said, but declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So why not do it his way? It's time, out to, it's time to start making it our business to make sure that we establish or reestablish our relationship with him. It says in verse 7 that if you remain in him, so not just when you feel like it, and my words in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. Which will lead me to my third point, establishing the connection. So, Quisha, what does it look like to establish or reestablish my connection with him? We've got to get back to the basics and put God in his rightful place. We've got to get back to doing what pleases him. We've got to get back to spending time with him and learning more about his character. We've got to get out of ourselves and how we want things to go and how we used to do things. And it's time to surrender to his will. So in this season, I've been saying his will, his way, Quisha's faith. So God, whatever it is that I need to do to please you, I'll do it. Move whatever is in your way, even if it's me. Change the way I talk, change the way I move, and help me fall in line with your will. Psalms 51 and 10 says, create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and a renew a right spirit within me. So God, do a new thing in me. I remember Pastor Ross preached a sermon a couple weeks ago called, Do You Know Who You're Dealing With? And this excited me because I know who I'm dealing with, I'm able to remain in him. I've experienced him for myself to know who I'm dealing with. When we look at Exodus 3, when God spoke from the burning bush and instructed Moses to go to Pharaoh to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, and Moses asked God, what do I tell them when they ask who sent me? What is his name? And God responded, tell them, I am who I am, sent you, I am. I found I am to mean he is self-sufficient, self-sustaining. We also know him as Alpha and Omega. He is El Roy, the God who sees. He is El Shaddai, God Almighty. Let's take it to you and I. He's my deliverer. He's my keeper. He's my mind regulator. He's my heart fixer. He's a promise keeper, and he's my healer. He is I am. So in the second part of verse 7, when he said, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. I can have faith in him because that's who he is. I can have faith in knowing that he's going to take care of me because that's who he is. That's why it's important for us to establish or reestablish our connection with him. We are because he is. Hmm. Because I'm connected to him, I'm able to have access to who he is. I'm victorious because of who he is. I have more than enough because of who he is. I'm healed because of who he is. I'm delivered because of who he is. So don't wait until tomorrow to get connected to him. Do it now. 
And before I established my own connection with God, I used to say, I'll do when I'm done having fun or doing life my way. But I soon realized that it was only an excuse to continue to do what I wanted to, which kept me disconnected from him. But what I realized in the process and what made me want to reconnect to God even more is how he loves me in the midst of, how he protected me in the midst of, how he kept me in the midst of. So I would like to challenge you on today to check your connection. Identify what has caused and is causing the disconnect. Remove the distractions, establish and reestablish the connection with him. Remember to trust the promise, trust what he said and not what it looks like. It's going to be uncomfortable, but he is here to do life with you. So in this season, pastor has given us the word um, elevate as our theme for this year. So what better way to elevate than by getting connected to him? And as our ministers are coming, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you don't have a relationship with him, and you have a desire to be connected to him, whether it's online or in person, repeat after me. If you're in, in person, come down to the altar. Our ministers are here to pray for you. If you're online, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you. Thank you for who you are, God. God, I welcome you into my life, asking you to take control of my life. God, remove whatever's in the way, and I come surrendering, God. God, I need more of you. And I welcome you as Savior into my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, congratulations. You are now saved. Our second call is for prayer. If you're saying, I need prayer to get connected. I've been trying to do it on my own and it got me nowhere. But I don't know where to start. So I need help. Our ministers are here. And they're willing to pray for you as you get started on this journey. As I said before, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till next year. Do it. Go ahead and do it now. Our ministers are here. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, and as the mighty fire, your daily prayer, come on down to the front. Just to be close to you, that's my desire. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you. That's my desire. I wanna be close to you. I need to be close to you. I want to be close to you. That's my last call, if you are looking for a place that is willing to help you get connected, 
I myself would like to recommend the Abundant Love Fellowship Church as a great place to be. If you'd like to become a member partner, please come down. Our ministers and our pastor are here to, ready to welcome you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. That's my desire. Please stand all over the building. I want to thank those who are here, those who came online. Thank you for your presence. Father God, we say thank you. We thank you for sitting with us, God. Thank you for dwelling here, God. Thank you for this reminder to get connected back to you. Help us, God, as we get in this relationship with you. Remove the distractions, God. Remove the hindrances, God. God, we submit and we surrender. We thank you, God. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before his presence and his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, both now dominion and power, now and forever. Amen. Amen.